teaching on session three or week three of discipleship. Uh, one thing that I, that I would encourage is every week, every, every session, always go back to week one and quiz the six ingredients, okay? Because th those are so important. That, that's what you want them, anybody you're discipling, you really want them to leave with those memorized, right? Because, you know, Miss Edie, when, when, when things aren't going well, you can kind of scroll through those six things in your mind and you say, oh, maybe, maybe you're missing one or two of those things, right? And so understanding what God's priorities are and then seeing what, maybe, maybe what we're missing helps us to identify where the gaps are in our life, right? Because I promise you, if you're doing all six of those things on a regular basis, your life's going to be on fire. It's going to be amazing, okay? So the other thing that I, I always like to quiz too uh, is, is on the salvation part, the two things based on Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that God says is required for salvation, okay? Those two things are believing in your heart that God has risen Jesus from the grave, and confessing with your mouth that, that Jesus is your Lord. Okay, those two things, those are the two elements that God teaches us in that verse that are required for salvation. So we want to we want to make sure that that number one, we keep them in memory, just like I was picking on Tommy this morning. You know, he's done this discipleship so much. Now he just remembers these critical, these key verses, and that's just one of the benefits of, of doing the discipleship, is you've always got that, you know, you've always got that right on mind. So uh, like I said, just a, a quick quick review or a quick refresher from, from that real critical week one stuff. Now, session three is really awesome. So we're going to start off by, by teaching again the importance of love. Why are we doing that? Because Jesus said that's the most important thing. So we, so we touch on that one more time. We put a little more emphasis on that. We talk a little bit about the gifts of the Spirit, our superpowers that we get as Christians, which is really cool, right? And then... We end up with, with a very, very, very important thing that we all need to understand, and that is the power of our words, okay? And that's critical, both for good and for bad, right? So starting off with love, which starts off by, by referencing 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. And basically, guys, this is where God is teaching us through Paul that if we are not loving... If we're not loving other people and if we're not loving God, our Christianity is worthless. It's zero. It amounts to nothing. And he gives some specific examples. You know, he talks about, you know, exercising spiritual gifts. He said, I can speak in the tongue of man. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, when you start loving, then your phone miraculously goes out of the pocket. Um, but he, he says, you know, he says, I can, I can, I can act like I'm practicing these, these spiritual gifts. And we see that a lot, right? Sometimes in churches, you'll, you'll see people, you know, that, that, that seem really, really spiritual, but maybe they have a really cold heart. And what does their Christianity amount to according to, according to Scripture? Nothing. Zero. He said, even, you know, he talks about giving his body to be burned, like giving all of his stuff away, doing all that stuff. But we can do that stuff with wrong intentions, right? We can give stuff away like, hey, everybody, look at me. Not as an act of love. But as an act of, you know, trying to trying to bring attention on ourselves. So, so he's saying he's he's bringing into perspective the importance of love as a Christian. Okay. So the other thing I, it, it, it's worth mentioning here too is that in in First Corinthians chapter thirteen verses four to eight, God gives us a definition of love that we really need to understand, and we need to make sure that the people that we're discipling understand, because when we love the way that God defines it in those verses, something amazing happens, Miss Carol. It says we'll never fail. Amen. We will be a success at life. We'll be a success in our ministry. We'll be a success in our family. We will not fail if we love in those ways. So, so go over those verses with them specifically. And again, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. And again, that's, that's my favorite verse in the Bible. That's one of the first ones that God used to, to really pop out at me. And that verse is, Love never fails. Now, again, it's important to, to teach what love is biblically like that because we've kind of butchered that word in the English language, haven't we? Love. I love pizza. I love my puppy dog. I love the color yellow. I love, you know what I mean? And so love can seem kind of flippant. So when we're, when we're describing to somebody biblical love, it's important that we use the Bible's definition so that they don't misunderstand that. 
right? Because the kind of love that God's talking about that doesn't fail isn't the kind of love that we have for pizza. <laughs> it's a love that, that, that always hopes. It's a love that always perseveres. It's a, it's a love that, that, that sees the best in people it, based on that definition, right? So uh, very important to make sure they understand what that love looks like. And again, when we're talking about love, it's the most important thing for a Christian to do is to fall in love with God. Fall in love with Jesus. Most important. You gotta do, you gotta start there. You've got to start there. If you don't do that, nothing else matters. Okay, Amen. that's why Christ died on a cross, is for that relationship. And, and, and that's that that needs to be our number one goal as a Christian is to is to fall deeper and deeper in love with Christ. Okay. So um, now when, when we talk about loving. And especially in regards to other people. So it's pretty easy to love God, right? Because we, we see what he did on the cross for us. We, we understand just how amazing God is. And, and he's demonstrated his love for us. But sometimes, Shorty, when we think about loving other people, there's some question marks that come up in our mind, right? Amen. There's some people that are difficult to love. You've got family. You've got friends. I've got some amens that are silent out there. I've got some heads. <laughs> <laughs> so and we, we, we love them. But, but, but here's the tricky part. God's called us to love those people too. Amen. And we got to remember how unlovable were we? Because Jesus didn't die for us after we got our act cleaned up. He died for us when we were thick in our sin, right? So we've got to remember that, you know. But one thing I want to make sure so in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, God teaches us in those verses about the superpowers. Is that cool, Jahim? We get superpowers as a Christian. There are gifts of the Spirit that come along with the Holy Spirit. So we talked about when you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. That's, a, that's the guarantee that God gives us. We're going to be talking about that pretty soon. That's a guarantee that God gives us of our salvation. He puts His Spirit inside of us. And with His Spirit comes His power. And specifically, there's gifts that come with that. The ability to love supernaturally. The ability to be gentle, the ability to forgive, the ability, supernatural ability to have self-control. Uh, all, all of these are not others' control, by the way, okay? <laughs> we don't get that gift. We get the gift of self-control, right? Yeah. But it's supernatural. And so when we think to ourselves, how could I ever love that person? And I'm, I'm referencing the one that we're thinking, oh, I can't love, you know what I mean? You can supernaturally do it now as a Christian. It's a supernatural power. You know what? I think back through lots of years of youth ministry, and I'm telling you, there's been some teenagers that have been very, very difficult to love. As a matter of fact, they would have been impossible to love in and of myself. I wouldn't have loved them, but through Christ, I loved them passionately. Passionately. And that... Made it, made, it, made it possible for us to minister to them and to see things change. Otherwise, if it was just up to me, I would have, I would have dismissed them. I would have blown them off. So uh, with these abilities, it's very important to understand these, these gifts of the Spirit, and this is what you want to teach that person, is we have those abilities now as a Christian. It is merely up to us to choose to exercise them. Okay? So... Let's say Miss Janice made me mad and, and she just, she's too sweet. I just can't handle it. She's just driving me crazy because she's too sweet. So I just don't like her. I just don't like her. So obviously I'm not being, I'm not being real here, but I'm using you as an example. Okay, I just can't like her. But as a Christian now, I've got that, I've got that power in me now to love her through Christ. So I choose to love her and God will fill that choice up with the ability to do it. Supernaturally. Okay, that self-control. You know, when, when we used to, uh, we used to fly off the handle. We used to do things, uh, uh, sinful things, whatever. You know, we and it just seemed like we just couldn't. We use that expression, just couldn't help it, right? Now, with the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, we choose not to do it for Christ. He blesses us with the ability not to do it supernaturally that we didn't. Amen. Do. Okay, so that's that's a good way to that's a good way to introduce the fruit of the Spirit. Is, is, is a power to do the things that God has called us to do. 
we can now do supernaturally that we couldn't do before, okay? Um, the last thing that we move into in session three is about the power of our words. And spend some time with this because it's critical that a new Christian and that somebody that's, that's not been through discipleship, that they understand how important this is, okay? So, uh, you know, when, when, we, when we think about the tongue, the, the, mo the, the verses that are, that are here, you know, they just jump out. James chapter 3, God gives us a, a description of the power of the tongue, and it is it's pretty bad, isn't it, Larry? Amen. It talks about, uh, uh, like, flames and, and hell and poison and, and these, these words that he uses to describe it. Uh, and God, and God, and especially through the book of James, at least three or four different times talks about the danger of our tongue. Okay? And, and so we've got, to, we've got to understand the importance. Anytime God repeats himself in Scripture, we need to stop and take notice. Every word in Scripture is important. But most especially, just like our parents, right? When, when, when you repeat yourself, what, what does that mean, Miss Dee? Second better, or third time you tell Daniel something. You better listen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Right? So, so, and that's God. God's the same way. He's our Father. And when He's trying to get our attention, He's going to repeat something. And He, several times through Scripture, He repeats the importance of guarding our tongue and making sure that we are being responsible with what's coming out of our mouth. And then, so again, He talks about how, how destructive it is, right? So, uh, He uses, He says, consider what a small spark, this is what He says in James chapter 3, consider what a small spark set such a big blaze of fire, right? You, you, you know, uh, you see these big forest fires, you watch on, on the news how they're, they're consuming thousands and thousands of acres and they're destroying homes and people are dying. And there's these, you know, you've got these planes that are coming in and they're dousing with water and it's just this huge effort to try to control these big fires. And most of them are started with a, just a cigarette butt, a little spark. And our words do the same thing. They cause that kind of destruction. How many, how many of you have been affected by negatively by a word that somebody spoke against you? I, I, so for the camera's sake, I'm going to tell you, every hand just went up. Okay, and that's, that's a fact. It, we've had our, our hearts broken, right? It's like a, that's like a fire, and it spreads, right? You know, when you gossip, doesn't that spread like fire? You can, you can say one negative thing about somebody, and then you get everybody talking about it, and pretty soon it's like a fire, right? Everybody's talking bad about that person, and now you've just destroyed that person's reputation, and you've, you've damaged that person. And what did you say? Tore up a miniature. And tore up. Thank you for mentioning that. You want, to, you want to talk about the number one way that the enemy uses to split a church? Is right in your mouth. Right in your mouth. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, God also says, and he's very specific about this. He says the power of life and the power of death rests in the tongue. With our tongue, Shorty, we can kill people. How many wars have been started? A lot of suicides. A lot of suicides. Thank you for pointing that out, Larry, right? How many people have taken their life because of ugly things? Young people, right? Ugly things that people have said. You know, that the cyberbullying and all that stuff. Those are those are words and they they, they contain power. I want I'll help your folks to understand that that the words that they speak, Miss Julie, when you're discipling, they're they're like vessels of power, containers. But transversely, those containers can be filled with love and life. God says it's 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 life and death, right? So it's important to know that with our mouth, with our words, we can save somebody's life. We can bring hope. We can give encouragement. That's a gift of the Spirit, right? We can build people up. We can turn their whole life around with the words that we choose, especially when we're speaking the Word of God because then we're speaking power. Right? Amen. So, so remember that, you know, as, as, a, as a new believer, the power of our words is, is huge. It's huge. And so um, uh, the, to, to kind of wrap it all up, one of the things that Jesus points out in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, uh, he, he kind of he describes the words of our mouth. And, and I like to use the example of maybe being like our, our, our physical pulse. 
So if we want to check somebody's health or to check if they're alive, check their condition, and, they, and, they're, and they're laid out on the ground, what, what are you going to do? Check their neck for their pulse. Check, you're going to check for a pulse, right? What, what, are you alive? What kind of shape are you in? And I think we've even done that example here on a, on a Sunday morning where we, what, what are those things called the tone depressor? Is that what it is, like a popsicle stick looking thing? You know, and that, that's kind of like if, if we want to see the condition, according to Jesus, the condition of somebody's heart, look at what's coming out of their mouth. So Jesus says that the, the things that come out of the mouth, if, if they're ugly, that means your heart's ugly. For it says, out of the depths of the heart, that's what speaks the mouth. So, Jahim, if we've got loving things that are coming out of our mouth, if we're saying good things about people, if we're building people up, if we're, if we're speaking the word of God, guess what we got in our heart? We got the word of God. We got love in our heart. Amen. Our heart's in good shape. But if we've got bitterness coming out of our mouth, if we've got hateful words, if we've got cuss words, if we've got all, guess what? Guess what that says about the condition of our heart? Right? It's ugly, right? So now that now I want to be so careful when I start when we start saying ugly, God doesn't condemn, He convicts. Right? So this is a good way, and, and even as a new Christian that as you're teaching them through discipleship, as they're listening, if they hear those things come out of their mouth, it's not like, okay, well, game over. You know, I've I've failed, I'm just to fail. No, no, no. That's conviction. It says, Oh, okay, I need to work on that, right? That, that's, a, that's an indicator that there's something in your heart that you got to get right. you got to get fixed. Right? We just talked about we got the fruit of the Spirit. We can fix it now. We can love. We can choose to change what's in our heart. So uh, one, one verse that you might talk about that's not in here, it, it talks about in Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about a root of bitterness. Right? Now where does a root, where does a root lie? Where, where, do, you, where do you find a root? Underneath, right? Do you do you see do you see a root? You don't see it, right? It's under the surface, but something's going to grow from that, right? It starts as a root, and then it then it comes out, and and that's what Jesus described. He says there's a, a root of bitterness that can live in your heart, will defile many, will defile many, and defile is kind of a word that describes like uh, almost like a poison, right? It 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 it, it darkens or it, or it destroys or it ruins many people when we allow a root of bitterness in our heart. So really, really important. We've got a lot of Christians that harbor unforgiveness in their heart for people. And, and drive that home through this discipleship. And this is a short one. This is a short one. So you've got a little, you've got a little extra time. But, but talk them through that a little bit. If they've got unforgiveness through the fruit of the Spirit, they now have the power to overcome that. And help them to understand the importance of that. Because, so we just saw what happens. If we've got that root of bitterness in there, it's only a matter of time before it comes out of here. And when it comes out of here, it's going to start a fire. The enemy will make sure of it. Right? Especially, and I say this jokingly, but especially you got some unforgiveness towards somebody. You might think you can hold it back, but wait till somebody says something nice about that person. <laughs> It'll come out. No, no, no. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I, you might be able to hold it in, but if somebody says something nice or compliments the person that you're hating on, here it comes. Here it comes, right? You got the word vomit. So, uh, what you're going to see with, with this discipleship, guys, is week one has a lot of stuff. And we do that on purpose because sometimes you only get one week. Things happen. First, people move away, whatever. So we, we cram all the most important things, the most important elements of Christianity into that first week. And progressively, there's a little bit less. And that's on purpose so that we have more time to talk. Okay, so we're still, we obviously tonight, we covered some very critical things. It didn't take a long time. It didn't take a long time. But then it gives, it, it provides for that opportunity for, for you to have conversation. So again, quick elements. If somebody asks you a question in discipleship, that you don't know the biblical answer to, what is our answer? I don't know. Thank you. That doesn't mean you're stupid. Matter of fact, that is the most respectful and the most holy answer that you can give. The worst thing that you can ever do is give somebody your opinion. Okay? Give them a biblical answer. Tell them, hey, you know what? I don't know, but we'll find out together. Then both of you grow, right? I, 
The reason I know a lot of the things I know, and it's not that I know all that much, it's because I've been challenged. I didn't know. We had to go to Scripture to find it. So just like Tommy, through all this discipleship, Larry, I know you've, you've been through a lot. But boy, you just start learning that stuff because you've been asked those questions, those difficult questions. You find the biblical answer for them, and, and both of you grow, right? Teachers learn a lot. That's right. That's right. So I'm, I'm so excited about you guys taking these steps. For, for, for whoever's watching this, I'm so excited that, that you are loving God enough to be obedient and being willing to disciple like this. We pray that it's amazing. Remember, this is how we're going to build relationships. We, we build connectivity through the discipleship. We're going, to, we're going to connect people to Christ. And this discipleship is going to connect you to your purpose. We were created for this. Because guess what we're doing through this? Not only are we being obedient to Jesus Christ and going into all the world and making disciples, but through this, we're bringing glory to God. And that's our ultimate goal, right? Amen. Make Him look beautiful. And through this, He does look beautiful, doesn't He? You can't miss it. When we talk about redemption, we talk about what He's done on the cross, we talk about the heaven that He's provided for us. There's no way to miss how lovely and how beautiful He is. Okay? I use the word agape for love. 